Hello, everyone. We are live. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Facebook Live in celebration of our founder, Father Flanagan's birthday. My name is Gabby, and we are live here in, out of Ballymo, Ireland, which is Father Flanagan's birthplace. First, I want to introduce you to our guests. We are live with Tom Lynch, who many of you know from our Facebook Lives out of the Boys Town Hall of History. And we're also here with Fidelma Crocan, who lives in Volumo, Ireland, and is going to be taking us through the Father Flanagan Memorial Garden. So thank you so much for joining us. How are you both doing today? Good, Gabby. Doing very Good. well. Thank you. Delighted to be joining you today for the Facebook Live. Awesome. Well, we are so grateful to have you. So if you could tell us, you know, where are we and why Volimo? Some of our viewers might not know the rich history behind Father Flanagan's birthplace. So, Tom, if you want to briefly just give us a rundown of why we're in this garden and how important it is, that would be great. Uh, Father Flanagan was born not near the village of Valley Mo in 1886, and he considered the village to be his hometown. And the garden is located next to St. Crone's, which was the church where he was baptized and he worshiped when he lived in Ireland. And Fidelma is gonna give us a fantastic tour now of this garden, which the people in Valley Mo created to honor Father Flanagan. Great. Well, Fidelma, if we want to just start at the beginning, it would be awesome to have you kind of just walk through what the garden looks like for those who aren't able to go and visit Balimo. Take you around the garden. So, uh, as, you, as you've alluded to, um, I have, was born and raised in, in Balimo, lived here most of my life. And presently, I'm part of a small group of people in the village. Um, and it's our mission to honor Father Flanagan in his home village and in his home country. So this, this garden was um, created in the spring and summer of 2016. So let's, let's take a tour. Yes. Which, um, the, the idea behind the garden is that people can come in here and ha do a self-guided tour we told the story of Father Flanagan and his life and legacy through these uh, storyboards. So you can start here and go right, walk your way around. Um, there are certain items planted in the garden that have significance to his life. Uh, for example, we have um, 11 conifers sewn here to represent the 11 Flanagan children, uh, children of John, four sons and seven daughters represented by these 11 conifers growing here. That's awesome. Um, next, I'll point out to you um, an Austrian pine, and that is to represent the um, country in which Father Flanagan was ordained in, in Innsbruck in Austria. And here we have our largest tree in the garden, which is a Nebraska cottonwood. Um, and it's, uh, it's growing pretty tall, as you can see. Um, the various Nebraskan visitors we've had to the garden, they have told us that um, it makes a lovely whistling noise when the wind blows through the branches. So we're going to have to keep an eye on it, because I think it's going to get quite tall. Yeah, that's so cool to have our home campus represented in the garden. Good. Yeah, good. Um, th throughout the garden, we've a, a couple of places where you can sit and relax. It's quite. It's a very peaceful, serene place. You can really feel the spirit of Father Flanagan here and have some time to relax and chill out. So we have a, a seat here, which, as you can see, says Ballymore Boys Town, 2017, and that's just to mark the unique the unique relationship that Ballymore has with Boys Town. We have a very close bond, and of course, Father Flanagan is that link between our two villages. Mm -hmm. And in fact. 
we are we have a an official sister city relationship with Boys Town, which was forged in two thousand and one, and we're very proud of that. It's it's great to be that closely can our village of Ballymore connected with the village of Boys Town. Also, in that year in two thousand and one, the Boys Town alumni gifted Ballymore with a life size bronze statue of Father Flanagan. Now that stands a couple of hundred yards from where I am up in the top of our village. Um, it was unveiled in in the for that wonderful occasion and a, a number of us from the from back so i just like to point out to you here uh, the, the two different sizes of these conifers mm -hmm. so at this part of the garden we tell the story of how when father flanagan started working with the homeless first of all he worked with the homeless men of omaha on the streets and after doing that for a while so they are represented by the taller conifers there um after a while of doing that father flanagan realized that uh, that some of these men were lost cause and he really needed to work with the younger as he called them the embryo of these men he needed to work with the boys so hence mm -hmm. we have the smaller conifer here representing the boys and that's where his life's work lay after that as we move down as we move along the garden here you will notice some um stone structures mm -hmm. uh, these raised beds that are coming up the first one here, the smaller one. Um, event, we are going to shape those shrubs into a roof shape. And this first one here represents the, the, represents the first home that Father Planning and opened in downtown Omaha on the, on the 12th of December, 1917. And further along then we have a larger uh, raised bed, which represents uh, the second home he opened, which in order to, to accommodate more boys, and that was also known as the German American home. Very nice. That's that um, raised bed there. We were we we're always very proud to fly our flags in mm -hmm. the garden, so it's uh, very still here today. But we on, on special occasions such as today we, we fly the flags we, we also have um, we usually have a boys town flag up there as well which was gifted to us from boys town awesome yeah for those watching it's usually pretty pretty so, rainy and the, dark there and today we were blessed with a beautiful sunny day so it's like father flanagan knew that we were going to tour the garden today Yes, absolutely, Gabby. Yes, yeah. So the whole, the whole open, openness, the the um, the openness and the space of this garden, the way it's set out. You know that that goes on then to represent um, Overlook Farm, which Father Flanagan went on to purchase and which became what is known as Boys Town today, of course. Um, and and in keeping with that whole thing, we have around the border of the garden, we have a good, a strong, sturdy hedge which gives stability and structure to the garden, just as Boys Town gave stability and structure to so many children that, that went through went through it. Um, we have a wide, a wide variety of plants sown in the garden, quite a di diverse range of colours and species. And that is to represent the fact that Father Flanagan took in a wide variety of boys when he first started off. You know, he accepted boys of various ethnicities, backgrounds, religions, races. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to capture that, the essence of that here as well. Yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah. Any, any questions, Gabby, so far? Will I, will I keep going? Yeah, go ahead and keep going. I'd love to see we have some of that brickwork I think we were going to show next. Yeah. Yeah, the brickwork. Yeah, that's there. They're the um, they're the uh, the the raised the uh, two beds. Mm -hmm. These structures here. 
of the yeah re representing the um the first homes that father flanagan had yeah it's awesome to see how much symbolism this garden represents and how much of Boys Town's story kind of translates here, even though it's across the world. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah, that was Yeah, that was that was that was our idea. We wanted yeah. to um, on this storyboard we we um we mentioned the um so we've got a, a picture here of um, Father Flanagan going over the lines with Spencer Tracy during filming at Boys Town in 1938. So that's just another part of Boys Town's history. Um, we were, when a number of us visited Boys Town, of course, we were delighted to see the Oscar in the Hall of History that Spencer Tracy, which he won for Best Actor, and then he presented it to Father Flanagan. It was just great to see that in the, in the case. Yeah. And as we come round the path towards the end of the garden, we have a, a weeping willow here, and uh, this this represents the death of Father Flanagan. In Germany in, in 1948. So we that's a uh, and as we come along, then we are we're drawn the center of the garden here. So a Sorry, we might have a bit of delay. Um, they are outside, we, not on Wi-Fi, so it might be a little slow. So we appreciate your patience. When the garden was um done in nineteen six sorry twenty sixteen. Um this area here was left we didn't have any structure here. We were wondering and he created this for us. Which as you can see is it's a, it's made from very cedar, and it's a, it's a hand, and it's holding an oak leaf, and it oh. Sorry, everyone, the connection, she is all the way over in Ireland and is on cellular data. So there's no Wi-Fi in the garden, unfortunately, but um, we did get to see some of it. And I do have some additional questions for Tom and he can kind of talk through as they rejoin here. Um, so, hey Tom, what are some of the what was Fidelma just showing us with the hand and the acorn? Can you talk on that? That is a that is a special sculpture that was created by an Irish artist, carved out of old oak, and it's a hand that is old, holding an oak leaf that's coming up, representing a new growth, a new child coming to Boys Town, and it's a very unique piece of artwork that they placed in the middle of the garden there, in honor of Father Flanagan, and as they walked through the garden, Fidelma, she was showing those placards mm -hmm. and those placards tell the story of Father Flanagan's life with through photographs and, and, and stories. And so the garden is open uh, all day long and even into the evening and people can walk into the garden and learn about Father Flanagan and his ministry and what Boys Town does today. Mm -hmm. And you can see the benches are there and Fidelma has told me that in the village, it's become a little center because it's a spot where families can come and, and some retired people and they can come and they can sit and enjoy the peace and quiet of the garden. And, and as you saw, it's a beautiful location. 
right next to the church where he was baptized in, in the center of the village of Bally Mo. And the Bally Mo village, again, is it's a smaller rural village in the country. And again, that's why the Wi-Fi kind of doesn't work very well because it's, it's a, a community of about 300 people, yeah. a farming community. Yeah. And it's a, it's a beautiful location. And you can see uh, with the sun shining, uh, it's, it's a beautiful, clean environment. And many ideas where Father Flanagan came up with the treatment of children took place within that village of Boys Town, growing up with his brothers and sisters and the guidance of his parents and the people in the community of Ballymo. And so that's why it's very important to uh, Father Flanagan's history and as Fidelma said, we're twinned. And now we, it looks like we got to link back up again. Yeah. And you can see this beautiful sculpture. Fidelma's daughter, Deidre, is doing this for us, shooting uh, with the camera. So we really appreciate Deidre doing that for us. Yes. Thank you, All right. Well, Tom, if you want to tell us, tell us a little bit more of what what was Father Flanagan's childhood like in Ballymo? Um, I know he grew up with 11 siblings, so I can imagine that their household was a lot of fun. What were some of their activities that they did as a family? Father Flanagan's father was took care of the property for a landlord. So he would go out, tend the grounds and take care of the animals, the sheep. And his mother would take care of the family, a very traditional setting for the Irish community in the 1880s. And Father Flanagan's day would begin early. He would go up, get up, uh, have a quick breakfast. And then before he would go to school, he would go and tend the sheep. And then eventually, once he began to go to school, his mom would walk him to school in the morning. And then he would come home from school and, and then uh, help with chores around the house. And then again, he usually would spend part of his day in the fields helping to take care of the animals and right by his home there was a river and he would often go fishing and that's one thing he loved to do he's, even as an adult he'd love to fish and he wrote how beautiful it was and how privileged he was to grow up in a uh, location of ireland in Ballymo. he loved it his entire life and often described it and he tried to replicate some of that beauty here at Boyce Town, nebraska for the children yeah so did any of his other siblings leave Ballymo like he did? He, he did. His, his entire family, his older sister, Miss Nellie Flanagan, immigrated to America. And then his older brother, Patrick, immigrated to come to Omaha, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And so he followed his big brother to Omaha. And then their elder sister, Miss Nellie, she joined him. And then several years later, the entire family immigrated to Omaha, Nebraska. They went to stay together as a family. And so in the village today, there are no Flanagan relatives left. He has some great nieces and nephews from a sister who had married uh, the Nottons, and they live uh, several villages over. But the majority of his family is now, uh, his uh, great nieces and nephews and cousins are in America. Yeah, that's awesome. So tell us a little bit more about Father Flanagan's time returning to Ballymo after he started Boys Town. Did he visit often? He visited several times in, when he re, uh, after he had immigrated to America in 1904. Uh, his, and he would come back to the village to see his sister, Mrs. Staunton, and she was the uh, uh, teacher and in charge of the school in the village of Ballymo. And she lived there with her husband in right across the street from the garden. If you uh, just went a little block over, that was where Mrs. Staunton lived. And Father Flanagan would visit her. And we have pictures of him uh, visiting with her at her home. And then in his final visit in 1946, in front of the church, you can see St. Crone's. They put a little stage. And that's where Father Flanagan addressed the people of the village of Ballymo. And then many of the people he grew up with uh, came to see him fellow children and people who remembered him. And we still have people in the village of Boys Town, they're still uh, in Valley Mo, still alive, who remember that visit of Father Flanagan coming back to Valley Mo. And again, he loved it. And we have correspondence where he would write to people in the community and write about his friends and saying how he grew up with this family. Have, are they still there? 
they moved on. So he kept strong links with the community of Valley Mo uh, up to his death. Yeah, that's so cool. So how do you think that Father Flanagan's upbringing in Volumo influenced his calling to serve homeless and underprivileged men and boys in the United States? Father Flanagan, from his grandpa Flanagan and his father would hear stories of Irish saints and patriots and how they struggled against oppression and against uh, intolerance, which was part of life in Ireland at the time. It was an, a, a, a colony and people were there discriminated due to their, their race or their religion. And so Father Flang grew up hearing that. And then he that began to form his ideas. Everyone was equal. Everyone needed to be treated with dignity and, and to have a, a good life. And then the spiritual aspects of his life were created there with his parents, especially his father. He would often pray the rosary and had a very devout life. And that's where Father Flang came up with his ideas of having uh, becoming a priest. And uh, all of these laid the groundwork for what he did of creating the village of Boys Town for children of all races and religions and in wanting to incorporate everyone into the community of Boys Town. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, we can see Fidelma kind of panning around the garden a little bit and showing us it, which is great. So we'll keep our eye on that as we talk through a few additional questions. So did the boys at Boys Town partake in any fun Irish traditions? Uh, yes, uh, and we still do it at Boys Town. Uh, Father Flanagan would have uh, uh, special events like uh, Halloween, because Halloween is technically an Irish holiday. So he would have Halloween celebrations for the children. And then he would also, at Christmas time, he loved Christmas and he adopted some of his Irish traditions with the children at Boys Town. And we, some of the children still follow those today. And every year we decorate his house here in the village in Irish Christmas traditions in honor of Father Flanagan. Uh, and many, many of his ideas of, again, of equality and, and spirituality and living in a beautiful, clean environment still takes place in the village of Boys Town today. If you come see it today, the village looks beautiful with the flowers and the gardens. And you can see from the garden here in Valley Mo, that was all part of his idea of having a beautiful, clean environment for the children. And the people of Valley Mo, uh, Fidelma and her husband, Alan, and the community there as a group created this garden. They raised the money for it and designed it all on their own. And it's an achievement for that community to have done this. And it's uh, something very special to re reflect the memory of Father Flanagan, which he would love because, again, he loved na nature and he loved being outside. And so he would he would appreciate this because everyone can enjoy it, uh, the children uh, and the retired people in the village. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we can see the church that she's showing now in the bottom corner, which is just right next door to the garden. Is that correct? Yeah. That is St. Crone's. Yeah. Uh, the church he was actually bapti baptized in was replaced it because it was built in the 1840s, but that's the new St. Crone's, which was built in the 1950s. And Father Flanagan's uh, brother, Patrick, he dedicated the altar to his family, the Flanagan family. So when you go and visit Valley Mo, you can go into the chapel and there's a plaque by the front uh, saying this is dedicated to the Flanagan family from Father Patrick Flanagan. And it's a beautiful chapel there. Uh, and the services are, are, are fantastic. And they actually do have online services. So anyone out there can join the Valley Mo uh, services from St. Crone's uh, whenever they want to on Saturdays and Sundays. That's so awesome. So we got to see a little bit of the garden on this fun tour. Can you tell us any more fun facts about it? Uh, it the garden is intended to keep growing and evolving, just like Boys Town. And as Fidelma showed the plants, they're going to keep maturing and growing. They planted the cottonwood tree, and I kind of told them, I said, get ready, because <laughs> they'll grow very big. Uh, but that is fantastic uh, how the garden, and it'll be fantastic over the years to see how it does evolve and grow and more additions are made because there are plans to uh, create another uh, maybe museum for Father Flanagan right next to it. There's a building you can kind of see in the video there uh, towards the end. There's that building with like two chimneys. Someday that is the plans are to create that as a Father Flanagan Museum. So when people come to visit Valley Mo, they can stop by the garden and see the museum. And off landing. That's great.
Okay, so on the anniversary week of Father Flanagan's birthday, his birthday was this past Tuesday on the 13th, what is something that you think viewers should know about him? I think they should understand that Father Flanagan was a revolutionary. He believed children were individuals and should be treated with love and respect. And he also believed that everyone had the right to live a, a free life regardless of their race, their religion, ethnicity, uh, all concepts that were radical for their time. And he's an individual that we can still look to today as a role model in working with the with people, especially children. Yeah. And the people of Ballymo are, are fantastic for what they do to preserve Father Flanagan's memory. Uh, because without them, uh, we would not be able to have this beautiful garden and these projects that go take place in Ireland, recognizing Father Flanagan. So from Boys Town to Ballymo, we say thank you very much for doing this to preserve the memory of Father Flanagan. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We are so grateful. I know the connection is a little bit spotty, so sorry about that. But Fidelma and Dridi, thank you so much for going through this tour with us. It is so incredible that we are able to see such a beautiful place in celebration of our founder. And Tom, as always, we are so grateful to know all the fun facts and you're such a wealth of knowledge about Boys Town history and we couldn't do this without you. So thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, Deidre and Fidelma. Yes. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for watching. And as we wrap up Donor Appreciation Week for all of our donors out there watching, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for continuing to support our mission and give us more opportunities like this. So we hope you enjoyed this tour and we will talk to you all very soon. Thank you. Goodbye.